Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Uh, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, as you can see, we're back. We're full up on 200 event adventures. We've got a new message from the tutorial. Tutorial says, I'm going to try to work very hard so I can try to live to the standard set by Hugbert. I don't know what this is. I don't remember this. Tutorial. Comment. Oh, I guess this is just like a thing that they made. Anyway, we're going to look around the overgrown lot. Because I feel like doing that. Yes, I'm going to still ignore this. Um, yeah, wrong side of the tracks. There we go. Here we go. You step around the corner from the sleazy back alley, which you'd think would put you on the street, but the way that this town is laid out makes no sense, and survey the overgrown lot. It looks like an apartment furnished by irresponsible college students, but instead of an apartment, it's outdoors, and instead of Ikea, they went to the weeds and garbage store. You're fighting a sewer snake with a sewer snake in it. The sewers of Seaside Town are filled with snakes. Everyone knows that. This is one of those snakes, but it's swallowed one of those metal tools plumbers use to clear snakes out of clogged pipes. And now it's too stiff to navigate the sewers, and it's none too happy about it. If the way it's attacking is any indication, we're going to club it. You viciously bludgeon it, dealing eight damage. Boof, boof, socko! You win the fight. You gain fraud work. Carton of snake milk, a sewer snake, two strengthness, and five meat. So that's the first fraud war we need. By the way, swindle, shyster, and fraud are all synonyms for, like, rob someone, essentially. Bl I learned a new word. Blink them? Blinch? Blink. You're fighting a dire pigeon. At best, pigeons are a nuisance. At worst, they're trying to peck your eyes out right now. Attack it. You realize you're never going to survive unless you get a little crazy. So you crazily bash it with your shield cup and club for eight damage. Splat, zap, barf. You win the fight. Get pigeon egg. You're fighting a malt liquor golem. You approach a scattered pile of half-full malt liquor bottles and paper bags. But before you can raid it, the bottles leap into the air and assume a humanoid form. It staggers towards you. You get the jump on it. You use your seal clubbing club to ex usher it into the exclusive. I just took a damage club. Splat, smack, kerblam, fraud warden, malt liquor. Dire pigeon. Hey, this game has a lot of, by the way, I want to head this off here. Oh, we got a mysticality. This game has a lot of grinding in it. Just because like, hey, we're just going to run around looking for stuff. Um, and so I want to be clear that like, I'm probably going to do some off screen grinding. And in fact, I'm going to do some of that right now. I've got the adventures for it. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch. Um, I can drink a whole bunch and eat food to get myself more adventures. I'm just going to grind up until we can get all the Doc Galactic stuff. I'll be right back. I spoke too soon. I killed that one dire pigeon, and here we are. Lots of options. You managed to make it pretty far into the lot without being attacked this time, and you get the chance to look around a little. It's about what you'd expect. Tall grass, ramshackle shopping cart fortresses, piles of cardboard boxes staying with liquids you'd rather not identify. A low moaning sound which you take to be the wind, but is slightly spookier and more persistent than when you've encountered. The world is your oyster. At least this part of the world is. And how do you like your oysters? We're going to get this out of the way. Uh, we get some shyster weed. You're fighting a cooler wino. <laughs> some of Seaside Town's junks are too cool to live in the sleazy back alley, but not cool enough to live in an actual apartment or house. This is one of them, and he's mad at you. Crit hit. Zap whack socko, you win the fight. We got Oh, all we need is swindle blossoms. And we got unflavored wine coolers. And some sarcasm. Nice. Nice. Dire pigeon. Alright. I think um I think we're done here. Anything cool happening is now over. Alright. I'll be back in another second. And hey, we're back. I did some more grinding. I want to be clear that I am gonna grind off screen on this just because like a lot of it is like, oh, hey, I'm going to do this. Bam. You're fighting a drunken half-orc hobo. In the sleazy back alley, you're set upon by a drunken half-orc hobo. You're overpowered by his stench as you are confused by his slurred missives. One thing's for sure, though. It's beat or be beaten. You pretend he's a Christmas steal and festively club him for 11 damage. Zot, smack, boink, whack. You win the fight. Mad train wine and dirty hobo gloves. So, you know, a lot of it is just that. Like, if I really want to grind, like... 
Oh, yeah, more of these open up, by the way. But, like, if I want to grind, I can just go to Noob Cave and just kablams my way through it, you know? And that's really all I, like, got to do. It's just these two clicks, and I get some stuff, you know? And, you know, I got a lot of adventures, so I really don't feel bad about burning through them. And so if I just need to grind stuff, um, I'll do that off camera. Um, like I, I just did it there so everyone can see, just so you can have a taste of what this is actually like, because it's not too, too like huge. Um, the label on this carton says the milk is fortified with vitamin S, vitamin S, and vitamin S. It's a decent beverage, and it's size three. Let me close that actually. Um, pigeon egg. If you're ever trying to communicate with someone who speaks a different language, why not try talking about eggs? Everyone likes eggs. We'll eat it. You drop the egg into a municipal hard boiler. Wait a few minutes, pull it out, peel it, and eat it. It's like eating a regular hard boiled egg, only less so. And you gain two adventures. So if I really need to get some more adventures, I can do that as well. So let me see here. Where was I supposed to go? Market Square, I think. And then Docalactic. Here we go. Oh, whoops. This one. Docalactic appears at you expectedly. What did you need again? Here they are. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. In my hands, these herbs will advance our understanding of the science of human survival by at least a decade. As a token of my gratitude, allow me to extend to you and only you a 33% discount on all of my patent medicines. So now it's just this. So no, that's cool. The meatsmith wants us to recover his check from the skeleton store. So we're going to go through there. You're fighting a novelty tropical skeleton. Good salesmen always know that people always want more tropical vacations. The salesman who put this guy together assumed that a, del a skeleton decked out in a garish fruit hat was the next best thing. He was not a good salesman. We got cherry, cherry, and a lemon. We got two strength in this. You're fighting a factory irregular skeleton. You find a misshapen skeleton and pause to wonder what went wrong with its development, what its life was like before it became a skeleton, and why it is hitting you. But you get the jump on it. You club it like there's no tomorrow, doing 11 damage. Whack, boof, zot, and whammo. You acquire an item, really thick spine, and you win the fight. You're fighting a remaindered skeleton. You know how when you buy a skeleton, it usually has a label on it that says, if you purchase the skeleton without a skull, you should be aware that the skeleton is stolen property. It was reported as unsold and destroyed to the manufacturer and has neither the, the skeleton's original container nor the necromancer responsible for its reanimation has received any payment for this strip skeleton. This is the kind of skeleton the label's talking about and also the kind of skeleton that is attacking you. You get the jump on it, club. We got a low budget shield. That reminds me, we can actually go stock up with the things that I've gotten. Uh, equipment. So we've still got our steel hat, our steel club and club, and our sweatpants. Um, as I mentioned on one of my 300 second craps, although I don't know if that's actually come out yet, but um, I'm still not wearing pants and I haven't been for a few days. So this is a one handed, hold on, sewer snake. This is a foul, sharp, nope, foul smelling sharp chunk of metal on the end of a stiff, foul smelling strip of metal. It's a ranged weapon, it's a flail, and it does three to six damage, and it also has stench damage. Whereas this is one to two damage. Now, granted, all the muscle that we have is adding a bunch of damage, but that's still much better. I'm going to hold on to this, but, you know, that's pretty solid. Actually, wait, isn't this a ranged weapon? Yeah, it is. Um, so I'm not sure if that'll end up doing more damage, but we can equip this in our offhand. The shield seems to be made out of boards stripped from wooden cargo pallets and crudely nailed together. It's a shield. It reduces damage by three. We've also got Johnny Feathers and Dirty Hobo Gloves. Huh? This is a pair of filthy hobo gloves. The pungent stench makes you more effective in combat. Stick this in your hat as a symbol of your accomplishments and your impeccable fashion sense. So it'll add three to our MP and to our health. We haven't really run into an issue with that. 
and it'll add one to all of our stats here, the three stats, whereas these just add stench damage. Now, I already have stench damage from this, and I feel pretty strong about that. So let's go, let's just go take a look. We deal three damage. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I thought I remembered that. You bash your foe over the head with your sewer snake, but only deal three damage. It's not really designed for that. Maybe you should try a melee weapon instead. So, uh, yeah, I was right. But, you know, not when it mattered. All right, so let's put that back on. Okay, now let's try the new stuff. 12 plus 2 stink damage. Wham, kerblam, zot, and whammo. And we got a whole bunch of stuff. And brown paper pants. Ooh, let's go take a look at that. Brown paper pants. Power 20. Holy moly. The best pants are ones that stains don't show up on. Moxie plus 2 and plus 10% combat initiative. I will take the heck out of that. Um... My character has only gotten more and more trashy. Um, what were we doing? Meatsmith, right. You're fighting a swarm of skulls. You approach a shelf labeled Spare Skulls and wonder where the skulls are until you turn around and they're right there, nipping at your heels. Bonk them. You compare it to a kiss from a rose on the gray and then you introduce it to a kiss from your club on its face for 12 plus 4 stink damage. Bonk, smack, boof, zap, a new damage attack record. You win the fight. Mouse skull and loose teeth and two strongness. Uh, let's take a look at these. So we've already got a bunch more wine and other things. Let's see what these do. You drink the premium malt liquor and then wipe the premium malt liquor mustache from your upper lip. Five adventurers. Muscle boundedness, wizardliness, smarm, and drunkenness. So drunkenness is its own stat. You can see it here, tipsiness. Um, if I remember correctly, it's just how much you can drink. You drink the vodka. In, vodka, in Russia, vodka drinks you. Three adventures and three drunkenness. So we're getting adventures. Um, so I should remember to try to use my adventures if I'm going to drink because you know I don't get these items back. But I will get adventures back. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of bunny levers. What do I even do with these? I don't remember. Can I? Yeah, why not? If I'm going to do it off screen, I may as well do it here. Oh no, you can see my save tabs. My own YouTube channel. Um... Buh, 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 buh. Bunny liver KOL. I just I just want to see what I can do with it. Liver popsicle. Liver popsicle. This is a delightful confection of frozen liver on a stick, provided you have a condition that causes you to confuse disgust with delight. Oh whoa. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate that I'm going to have to make a whole bunch of those. Welcome to my kitchen. All right. I'm just going to slam these together. I'm going to make all 13. Yeah. I cheated and I got a new recipe. Hell yeah. Um, I'm going to take a break and grind some more, so I'll stop the recording and I'll just burn through the adventures that I got. Uh, I'm going to look for the check in the skeleton store. Um, after that, we'll check out some more Seaside Town, and then we're also going to go back to the Big Mountains and see all the new areas over there. Um, and at some point, yes, we are going to advance the main quest. Uh, but until then, I'm just going to go grind. Uh, I'll be right back. Hey, everyone. We're back. Um... I made like 15 bunny liver things, uh, but I went to here. Temporarily out of skeletons, you find a rare moment's peace in the skeleton store and pause to catch your breath. As you're catching your breath, several things catch your eye. There's a cash register made of bones on the counter. A treasure chest made of bones on a nearby shelf. And a pile of bones made of cheese on the floor. Not really. The bones is obviously made of bones. I'm going to check the cash register. Uh, we got a meatsmith... 
Oh, wait. Well, you look around for the cash register for the meat smith's check. You don't find it, but you do find a key labeled manager's office under a pile of receipts. We got the skeleton store office key. Novelty tropical skeleton. And we got a lemon. Nice. Factory alligator skeleton. I'm going to only try to read the new ones, like ones that I actually haven't read in the past. Temporarily out of skeletons. Ooh, nice. The new thing here is you could also check out the manager's office. Now you've got the key to it. You're finding the former owner of the skeleton store. You unlock the manager's office and find more or less what you were expecting, the manager. What you weren't expecting, however, was for the manager himself to be a skeleton. If a skeleton is selling other skeletons, isn't that kind of morally dubious? You don't have time to ponder the ethics of undead slavery right now because you're about to become the victim of a smaller scale crime of undead assault and battery. But you get the jump on him. Hey, we killed him. Cool. You win the fight. We got the check for the meat smith. We got three strength. Cool. Meat smith. Hey, any luck getting my payment for the skeleton score guy? The what store? Skeleton. The what guy? Skeleton store. Next door. Did you get my ske my check from the skeleton store guy? The skeleton store next door? Here it is. The meat smith takes out the check and looks at it. His smile falters. Uh, a check made out in the amount of 40 skeletons drawn from an account at the first skeleton bank of skeletons. I'm pretty sure that guy doesn't understand what words mean. Well, especially not now that he's been killed by once by skeletons and again by me, you reply. Oh, well. A deal's a deal, I guess. Here you go. Back to the shop. So, uh, I don't know if we really need any of these yet, but I will go to the inventory. Um, I figured out what the tutorial actually sent me. It's this. We got three bowls of the nest soup and three bowls of three bottles of Mountain Noob Pale Ale. Uh, and then the meat stacks. This is a stack of highly compressed meat. It's a meat smithing component, a meat pasting component, and it sells for 100 meat. Which makes sense because it is just meat. Um, I could cut it there, honestly. You know, that would be a good way to end it. Actually, I'll continue. I'll just finish out this little thing. Oops. Not there. Let me see here. Armory and Leggery needed a pie from the bakery. Right. Right side of the tracks. So, we'll check these all out later as well. But, our bakery, in the middle of our street. Nice. The moment you open the door to Madness Bakery, you can tell that something is wrong. Both of your hearts are beating faster than they should be. And all the red in the world has been replaced with that new kind of red you heard about on the radio. The interior of the bakery is throbbing in time with your pulses. Ma mated pairs of donuts, snakes, slither in blissful coils across the shelves of the glass display case. A chrysonopede <laughs> scurries under a counter. Scintillating motes of white flour dance in the air like tiny carbohydrate-rich angels. Your hand, at least you think it's yours, it's hard to be sure anymore, throbs where you touch the door handle. You look down and see a thin carpet of black ooze crawling between your fingers. You're fighting a gingerbread murderer. You find an adorable gingerbread man chained to a radiator. Hey, little guy, you say, let's get you out of this mess. You easily break the change. The gingerbread man speaks, but instead of the thank you you're expecting, he says, time to die, big brother. You get the jump. We kill him. Um, our strength is really high. <laughs> you're fighting a creep. You approach what appears to be a spinning turntable, but instead of a record on top, it has a spooky whirling face made of dough, and instead of music, it is producing a dreadful certainty that his face wants to eat your soul. We get the jump on him. We win the fight, and we get muscle boundedness. One of these guys again. We got a creepy mask. Uh-oh. We, hey, we work our damage record. You're fighting a baguette lady. You see a hunched over old woman rubbaging through pastries on a cell. You approach her. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad to see another human. She turns around. She's not human. Bunch of damage. We got a magical baguette. Sweat stands out on your brow. You struggle to keep it together. Strange colors intrude on the edges of your vision as you survey the scene. You see a door labeled office behind the counter. Two popular and complex baking machines sit on the counter in the rear of the bakery. One is the Bagel Mat 5000 Industrial Bagel Oven and Biomechanical Artificial Womb. Though you might have imagined a few of those words. The other just says popular in glowing pink letters. Behind the machines is a shelf strewn with the people you went to high school with, all dressed as different books. Or perhaps just books. It's hard to tell through all this snow. 
man, what should I do here? I'm going to embrace the madness. You breathe as deeply as you can, letting the spores of hallucinogenic fungus into your nose, then your lungs and your bloodstream, and then the missile silo hidden underneath your alligator farm. A bagel blinks at you. Or rather, it winks. You push another one next to it so it can blink properly. A cake wishes you a happy birthday. How nice. You thank it, but you tell it it isn't your birthday yet, and your name isn't Janet. The cake seems surprised. Are you sure it asks you? You aren't sure. Down the aisle, you see an interesting-looking display of muffins, but you have to climb the floor to get there. When the effects of the fungus wear off, your mind has been stretched in eight different dimensions. You vow to never, ever shut up about this experience whenever you're hanging out with your friends. We got 17 magicalness and a mysticality point, because of course we didn't. Look, it's already that much full again. You're fighting a dinner troll. You notice a gigantic dinner roll on a display on a counter. This will go great with my irresponsibly large dinner, do you think? But as you approach it, it grows a nose, a fang-strewn mouse, mouth, and two horrible, horrible eyes. Club. You deliver a Pesci-esque blow to the back of its head. 13 plus 2 points of blood wor- worth of blood oozes out of his ears. Smack, whack, pow, splat. Got a wad of dough. We got a muscle point, a level. Oh, man, we got some good stuff. Look at that. We're all filled up. Gingerbread murderer. I want to. I want to be able to do it. You know, here we go. Um, we should jimmy this open. I guess. Damn. You try to turn the knob of the office door, but the keyhole keeps licking your palm, and it tickles. I hate that. I. I really hate that. Um, I don't remember if I ever did this quest when I was a kid. And you know, a kid. Check out the bagel machine. The Bagel Mat 5000 gazes longingly at you with its strange needle-like pupils. Either that or the needle in the Bagel Mat 5000's two gauges indicate that all systems are nominal and the machine is ready to make some bagels. A label on the front reads, simply enough, insert dough. You turn the word doch over in your mind. Doff. Duff. Do. Duh. It's, a f- it's funny. It's a funny word. You snap out of your dough reverie, annoyed with yourself. Place is probably killing a lot of brain cells. But you got three wads of dough in your sack. So I'm willing to burn some dough on this. Shovel wad of dough into the top of the machine and press the big bagel shaped button on the front. There's a whirring, followed by a gurgling, followed by three bagels dropping into the, pla- in the, the tray at the machine space. Oh, dang! Look at that. Nice. The bagel is primarily used as a vehicle for toppings, but it can also be used as a wheel for some sort of bread van. <laughs> yeah, let's make some more of those. Um, you know, you decide you no longer trust Bagel Matt 5000. He was looking at you funny. Popular machine. See, I'm the popular machine, but you have no idea why it's so popular. It's not even working. You open an access panel on the side and discover why. There's a part missing. Recipe books. If you cook water dough with soda water, you'll get loaf of soda bread. Cool. I really want to like finish this quest out before I end the episode but honestly it's a lot of this opening the office door again damn you need to focus you grab the door's tongue with your left hand and turn the doorknob with your right but you get your parts wrong and end up simultaneously licking and kicking the door jam neither is effective though both are entertaining to your senses giggle you need to focus I really do want to finish this quest before I finish this out although the episode is already pretty long because I've been open the damn door you're fighting the cake, Lord. You reach for the door, but it flings itself open before you even touch the nod. A booming voice emerges from the haze of the office beyond. Who dares disturb the disturb cake, Lord? You creep into the office, hoping your eyes will adjust to the madness. Oh, uh, I guess you, you reply, finally finding the source of the voice. A man whose head is a birthday cake. Oops. Dusky Alfred, I guess. Dusky Alfred dares disturb the cake lord? Then Dusky Alfred is a fool. We're going to attack him with the seal club and club. Oh, we killed him. Hey, look, it's Madeline. You triumph. You step triumphantly over the form of the fallen cake lord to see a severe-looking woman glaring at you from behind a desk. Oh, hey, you say. You must be uh, Madeline, she says. Madeline Harkness. Hi, Matt. I'm Dusky Alfred. I'm here to rescue you, I guess. 
She scoffs. Oh, goody. Another adventure here to rescue me by destroying all my stock. Stock, you reply. I didn't see any stock. I saw more monsters. And I beat them all. And then I beat the boss. And now you're free. What you did, she says, sighing, was get a big accidental dose of ergo from the front door, start hallucinating, <laughs> and trash my entire bakery. And your encore was breaking into my office and destroying a wedding cake I spent six days on. So thanks a million. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, to be honest, says Madeline, I should have seen it coming. I was hoping the hallucinations would be more mild and just make people want to buy more donuts. The story about how I trashed your shop is fascinating, you interrupt. But the armorer and Legoret said something about a pie you were supposed to deliver. You know what's thing about that? Oh, sure. It's the one baked good you haven't destroyed yet, so I guess you can have it. I'll take the pie. Madeline hands you the pie and says, you know what? I'm clearly not cut out to run a hallucinogen-encrusted bakery. I'm moving up the supply chain. From now on, I'm only selling the raw materials. Let someone else deal with the retail nonsense. Hell yeah. Uh, she leaves to the back door. We got a no-handed pie. And I think we can just... Yeah, this just is a, a whole thing. Ooh, we got enchanted icing. Cool. Bagel machine. Yeah. Yeah, bagels. Cool. Oh, whoa. Dang, I shouldn't have used all my dough. Well, maybe I'll just get a few more. Yeah, all right. Look at that. All right. Let's do it. Cook some. Icing. Dough. Standard issue cupcake. It's a plain cupcake with plain frosting on it. It's basically as simple as it's possible for an object to be and still qualify as a cupcake. But hey, like those bumper stickers say, even the worst cupcake is better than the best day fishing. Hey, fishing sucks. God dang it. All right. Nope. She's at town. Market Square. And hey, now she has a shop here. Welcome to Madeline's Baking Supply, where I sell you stuff and don't have to bake anything and everything's great. We got a knowledge pie tin. This is a pie tin used by knowledge bakers to bake pies. Knowledge pies. Dough, skewer, a taco shell. Crispy taco shell. And then we got rolling pin and unrolling pin. Wow, that's that's funny. <laughs> anyway, um, what were they looking for? Armor and leg armor. And you like getting that pie from the bakery on the right side of the tracks? I'm awfully hungry. Here's your special pie. Hooray, thanks. He dives face first in the pie and scarfs it down lickety split and lickety pan. A weird look cro crosses his face. And he, a moment later, he coughs up a small metal object. Boy, Madeline's going to get sued if she doesn't start being more careful. Hey, get rid of that thing, would you? I'd pick it up myself, but, uh, you know. You grab the little metal thing and leave before the gratefulness becomes too overwhelming. We got the popular part. Cool. All right. So I could uh, get some stuff. Uh, I think I'm all right. I do want to. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to the bakery. I'm just gonna go until I. Yeah, dough. Popular machine. Yeah. Dang it! You place the popular part in its proper position, and the popular machine starts humming like a machine that's popular because it's so well oiled. Insert one wad dough, one strawberry, one glob of icing. Press the red button and wait. Damn. Um, I'll go right off screen, actually. This is the end of this episode. Um, I hope everyone's enjoying it. Um, I'm going to start cutting it a little harsher, uh, because it is, in some cases, it is a very, very slow game, just because there's so much of it that is, you know, like this. It's just grinding and running around looking for items. But, um, I'm still very much enjoying it. I like this game. So, that's going to be this episode. Thanks for watching. I've been Alfred, and this has been Kenny Malothing. Uh, play my dumb intro. Thank you.